Thank you so much for everyone who att um, for attending this evening. My name is Mallory Aldrich. I'm the program manager for the Caroline D. Bradley Scholarship. Um, I'm going to ask everyone to wait till the end. There will, there will be a question and answer portion. I may answer your question as we go through. So just please wait until the end and we will, um, and hopefully I can get your question answered. Um, again, I will. we will be recording this webinar and it will be up on our YouTube by the end of this week um, in case you missed something or you want to play it again. So a little bit about the Institute for Educational Advancement. We are a nonprofit located in Pasadena, California. And along with the Carolyn D. Bradley Scholarship, we also have our summer camp called UNASA which is a summer camp focusing on supporting the whole um, gifted child. We have one in Michigan every summer and one in Colorado and they're week long summer camps. You can find more information about that on our website. Um, if any of you are local, we have our academy program, which are enrichment courses held in small group settings. It's taught by subject matter experts and encourage in-depth curriculum on topics usually not held in school. And then we also have our Gifted Resource Center, which is available to anyone um, around the um, online free public tool created and curated by IEA with a, um, online databases of resources appropriate for the gifted learner from preschool through high school. And we do have information on stuff across the nation um, for people to look through. And you can get that on our website as well. So. The class of 2029 Caroline D. Bradley Scholarship requirements. What um, we are looking for is someone who is currently in seventh grade or plans to start high school in the fall of 2025 and graduate high school in the spring of 2029. That is why we call it the class of 2029 scholarship. So we are looking for if you're a seventh grader or currently a seventh grader, or maybe you don't fall into a spe specific grade level, but you are looking to um, start high school in the fall of 2025. They should demonstrate exceptional academic ability and achievement, strive for excellence and continually seek more rigorous academic challenges, demonstrates leadership abilities, creative thinker, they're curious, they have a thirst for knowledge, a passion for learning, they're motivated, embraces the merits of integrity and honesty, high level maturity, um, seeks an accelerated diversified high school program, whichever is their best fit. And then lastly, is a US citizen who's going to attend a high school program based in the United States. And that um, there is no flexibility on that. We often get that question. So briefly, how to apply. So the link is um, go to our website, educationaladvancement.org under Carolyn D. Bradley Scholarship and how to apply. Applications are due April 10th, 2024 at 8 p.m. Pacific time. Um, in the past, it had been at a different time, but this year they will be due at 8 p.m. Pacific time. When you get into our website, you will click apply now to get into the, um, into the application. Again, we'll wait for questions at the end. Um, but yes, yeah, so if you are looking to apply to the scholarship, you should be either in currently in seventh grade or planning to start high school in the fall of 2025. So once you are inside, this is what you will see of the first page of the application. If this is the first time you've logged in, this is what um, you'll start here. If you have already logged in, you will click resume a previously saved form. And here, um, you will type in your email address and the password that you have created to log back in. You can log in and out as many times and save your application before the deadline, but you will have to put your type in your email address and a password every time. And a lot of times people are typing really fast and they mistype their email address and they try to come back and they can't get into their application. If that is the case, please reach out to us and we can get into your application for you. Do not start another application. Do not freak out that your application was deleted. It probably was just a typo somewhere and we can fix that. Um, but if you are returning, you will click resume a previously safe form. You'll type in an email address and a password to get into your application. 
So this is what the first page looks like. Um, you'll have a little checkbox that you can mark off as you're going through things. And if you want to stop for the day or stop for the afternoon, whatever it is, you will click Save My Progress and Resume Later. And that's, again, where you will type in your email address and a password to log back in. And you'll have to do that every time. In the application, this is, again, a little bit different than last year. So if you've had um, no people who applied previously or um, you had a child who applied last year, this will be a little bit different. You will type in the first name and the last name and the email address of your um, referral, so both your academic and your additional. The first time that you do that and hit save, these people will get an email from us, and the email address will come from recommendations at educationaladvancement.org. And there will be a form for them to fill out and submit, and that will get attached to your um, to the application itself. If for some reason they don't get that email, please reach out to us, and we can either we can resend it to them. If there's a referral, uh, a recommender who wants to also see just a kind of a paper version as they're going, you can download the PDF of what they will be filling out if you want to see it, or if you want to give it to them as well. And maybe they want to submit it via email just in case we prefer not to. We want them to go through the system, but we do have that back up here. You can click the link um, to download the recommendation um, form, which is what they will see um, again. But they should, the second that you type in their first name and their last name and their email address and hit save that first time, they will get an email from us. They will not get it multiple times, so you don't need to wait till the very last um, day. You can do it the first time that you're setting up your application and hit save and they will get an email. If you come back multiple times and hit save, they're not gonna get an email every time, just that very first time. And I will go over what the difference is between an academic and an additional referral in a little bit. So again, questions at the end, we will, I will be able to answer most of these as we go through. So please just wait until the Q&A portion. So the application components um, is your general application form. And this is gonna be your information, um, parent information, family information, school information, information about the applicant itself. It is really important when parents are putting their information in here that they use an email address that they check because that is the email address that we will be using to communicate with you with your uh, regarding the status of your application. In years past, parents have used emails that Maybe they only check monthly and that's kind of their spam email account. Please do not do that because that is the email address that we will be using to do all official communications regarding your application. And it, the primary contact should be the parent email, not the student. Um, we do need the parent email on there when you are doing the um, application. Do not put the student email. So that's that general application form. Then you have your two most recent years of official standardized test scores. And a big question we often get is, what is a standardized test? This is a test that's taken at school. It's usually in the spring. Sometimes it's not. But it is either issued by the school itself, by the State Department of Education, um, or the district. Examples of these would be the STAR test, the PARC, the Terra Nova, the MAP test. Those are just examples. Every state has a different one. Different districts have them. Pretty much it is a standardized test if it is taken at school. So if you have a child who has taken a test at school and they've received scores, it is what we are looking for. And we are looking for the two most recent years. That will probably be fifth and sixth grade for most applicants. If they only have sixth grade, that's fine. If they only have fifth grade, that's fine too. We're trying to look for the two most recent years of um, standardized test scores. Don't freak out that the test score that you're submitting, you don't think is this an official standardized test. It probably is. Um, we see many, many of them. If it, a good rule of thumb, if they were taken at school, then it is an official standardized test. And we're looking for the two most recent years. Now, you may be an applicant who does not take um, testing. Their school doesn't offer it, or maybe you're homeschooled and you don't have standardized tests. That's totally fine. We see that every year, and scholars are selected every year who do not have standardized test scores. In that component, you will upload a, um, just a Word doc letting us know why you don't have standardized test scores, that your school doesn't take them, that you're homeschooled, whatever the reason is. 
you'll let us know for the committee to know why you don't have standardized test scores. You will then also upload official transcripts. And I should, it could also be a report card. Um, and you will upload them to your application itself. I know many schools will say, well, those aren't official transcripts, then they're unofficial. That's okay. Um, but they should be from the 2022 to 2023 school year, and then the first semester of the 2023-2024 school year, or first trimester up and through when you've submitted your application, whatever you have the most recent through of this um, school year. Um, so you will do that. It can be the copies of your report cards. It can be a transcript report itself, but it should not be emailed to us um, by the school. You need to put that on your application yourself. If you are homeschooled, you will create what your homeschool um, curriculum looks like. If you have transcripts, depending on how what your homeschool curriculum looks like, but you will let us know the courses you've taken, things like that, the last um kind of two one and a half school years, the so 2022 to 2023 school year and the 2023 to 2024 school year. We know that those are going to look different for every homeschool student, and that's totally fine. We see that every year. We have lots of homeschool applicants, so we are not, um, it's not something um, not new to us to read, but that you, that's how you will submit your transcripts. The next component is quick takes, and these are fun um, little questions that we ask for the applicant to know, and they should be no more than a sentence and, and an answer. That's why they're called quick takes. The long portion of writing is our reflective prompts. Every applicant will have to respond to the mandatory essay, essay prompt, and that has to be an essay form. Then there are five additional questions, and they can answer two of them. One of those two can be in a creative form. So it can be an art piece, it can be a video, it can be a song, can be something else other than an essay. You can submit two other essays, that's fine too, um, but they have to, um, the first one has to be an essay, then one of the other two can be a creative piece. Um, the essays shouldn't be no more than 500 words each. Um, then you will also submit a student work sample. So this should be a piece of work which demonstrates the student's ability, aptitude, creativity, and motivation. Video submissions should be no longer than three minutes in total. And if you are submitting, uh, let's say you wrote a book, it should be no more than a chapter of a book. Um, we understand that many of you may have written a full book, but we unfortunately do not have the time to read many, many chapters of a book for all of our applicants. So if you do have a book, it should be no more than a chapter. A video should be no more than three minutes. It can be a work sample from something inside of school or outside of school. That is up to you. And it can be from any class subject matter that you would um, or any subject matter that you want to submit. Next is your parent guardian statement. And that is 500 words total. We give some questions to help parents answer the um, statement, but it is not 500 words per question. It is 500 words total. Um, and you do not have to answer all of those questions. Those are just there to help um, parents kind of guide them as they're um, writing the parent statement um, within that. But again, 500 words total. Again, the academic recommendation. That should be completed and returned by either a humanities or STEM teacher. So a humanities teacher is English, language arts, reading, social studies, history, government class, or humanities class itself. That's what that falls under. A STEM teacher would be your science teacher, your math teacher, if you have a STEM class, if you have an engineering class, something like that. And it should be from the last two years. Your additional recommender can be turned in by a teacher, so an elective teacher, maybe a Spanish class, or um, an extracurricular, so a coach within the school. It can be an administrator, it can be a school counselor, it can be the gifted coordinator, it can be a community leader, a religious leader, um, a Girl Scout troop, a Boy Scout troop leader, anyone kind of falls under the additional recommendation. Um, a sports coach, just someone who knows you outside of the classroom. And that's what we're really looking for in that additional recommendation as someone who can talk about you um, as an applicant outside of the traditional um, academic setting, because that's where we see that in the academic setting. Now, the other aspect of testing that we have is optional. 
and that is the SAT, the ACT, or the upper level SSAT. This is not in replacement of officials of a standardized test scores that I talked about earlier. This is something different. So you do not have to take that. It does not help you. It does not hurt you if you do or don't take them. And it's just another piece of information being submitted to, uh, along with your application for the committee to review. So again, um, the optional, the SAT, the ACT, or the upper level SSAT to take. And this is not in replacement of the standardized test scores that I talked about earlier. So some of you may submit two different types of test scores on your application. We have changed up additional information this year. So this year, there um, we are asking you to do it a little bit different. And this is the question or the um, prompt you will see. There may be personal information that you want to be considered as part of your application. Please write an essay describing that information. You might want to include opportunities, challenges, or hardships that have shaped or impacted um, your educational and or personal life. Please upload your response in a Word doc document and limit your answer to 500 words. And you can upload two additional pieces of documentation to support this statement. So if there, this is for you to talk about yourself in um, the regarding something that we're not seeing somewhere else on the application. Um, and you can upload two pieces to submit that to go along with your essay. So that may be um, if you are really into dance and that takes up a lot of your time. Yes, you've talked about it in your extracurricular activities, but maybe you want to go in a little bit more in depth of why you only have dance as your extracurricular activity. And then you may upload a short video of your of your dancing as well. Um, this is not a place for you to upload a resume. It's not a place for you to upload another work sample. That's not what we're looking for here. It's just something that you think that the committee needs to know about you to complete your application that we didn't am ask about this or that we didn't ask about earlier. And that is a little bit different this year. So facts, I'm gonna go over this again because we this is the most common question that we get. What is a standardized test? Again, if it was taken at school, you are good to go, submit those. Um, and how will I know if the test is a standardized test? If it's submitted at school, if it is mandated by the state, that's a standardized test. If it's mandated by the school, standardized test. Um, if you are someone who does not have standardized testing, you do not need to go out of your way to find it. It will not hurt you. We understand that that is becoming more popular um, across the nation. What if my school doesn't administer standardized tests? That's where you will, in that section on the application, you will upload just a brief paragraph letting us know that you your school does not have them, your school does not administer them, whatever the reason, um, just so we are aware that you didn't just skip that section while you were filling out the application. Do I have to submit SAT, ACT, or SAT scores um, and standardized test scores? You don't have to submit both. The SSAT, the ACT, and the SAT are optional. They do not hurt you. They do not help you. It's just another piece of um, information to go along with the application. Your standardized tests, if you have scores from the last two years, you need to submit. Will it look better if I took the SSAT, the ACT, or the SAT? No, it's just another piece of information. There's all these things on the internet that says that that is not true, that we're lying to you. That is not true at all. We have um, kids who are selected every year who did not take these um, tests and they were selected as scholars. Um, we understand there's time constraints and things like that of why you may or may not be able to. Um, so it is optional. It does not help you. It does not hurt you. It's just an additional piece of information. How do I submit a media file for my application? So let's say you have a video that you want to upload as your um, additional essay response or um, um, your additional um, your additional information area or your um, essay portion. We recommend, and the easiest way to do this is to put it in a Google Drive and then copy and paste the Google Drive into a Word document and then upload that Word document to that area. Um, just make sure that the Google Drive is, um, we can click on it and view it. Um, so you can do a Google Drive, you can do um, a Dropbox file as well, that works too. Um, those are the best and simplest ways to make sure that the application goes through. Oftentimes when people try to submit a media file itself, it's too big and it won't let you submit your application at the very end. So the 
best way to ensure that we will see it is either do a Dropbox link or Google Drive link um, to your media file. Uh, media file can be three minutes in length, no more than three minutes. We will only watch the first three minutes. So even if you submit something that is longer than three minutes, we will not be watching it longer than three minutes. Your work sample does not have to be from school. Most of the time they are, but it can be something that you are doing um, outside of school, either on your own or for a different um, activity. Can my transcript be unofficial? Yes. Because um, you are uploading it yourself, um, you are not getting it sent to us, it technically becomes an unofficial transcript, and that is totally fine. If you, your school does not give you transcripts, it can be copies of your report card. And what can I submit for in, um, additional information? Again, this is anything that you really think is important for you to know or for us to know as the um, committee about you that we haven't asked about anywhere else. So if you write an essay, um, about um, how important something is to you and you wanna maybe put a little bit more effort into that, you can put that into your additional um, information section and upload um, it there. But this is just something that um, is for you to really make you seem like a whole person to us. In the general application section, you will see that we have um, space for three additional courseworks. We have space for four extracurricular activities and three honors and awards. That is all we want you to write. This would not be a part where you would put in your additional information. We specifically have a certain number in those spots because that's all we wanna see. So it can either be the most recent or the most important, but an award from first grade probably doesn't need, need to be put on your application. We're really looking at stuff from about the last two, two years on this application going forward. Um, so really, we take that, um, we, it's very important for us, we take that seriously. We see if you try to put in three different extracurricular activities into one of the slots, um, we see that. So follow the directions and make sure you only put one per um, space. Here are your testing dates. These are on the last te available testing date for each one. These are um, on our website. So the last ACT is April 13th. The last SAT is March 9th. The last upper level SSAT is May 8th. Um, here are the codes that you will put in that so we get your test scores to us. And many of you are probably saying, hey, the last SACT date and the last SAT, SSAT date are after the application is due. I know that. It is because we will get those test scores back in time for us to read um, and in time. So do not worry that those will be late. You can still submit your application um, and let us know that you're taking the tests on April 13th or you're taking the tests on May 8th. It will still allow you to submit your application on time because that is an optional area. And then when we get your scores, we will add those to your application yourself. So don't worry about testing those. We know that that is after the, the application due date and that we will get your test scores back in time to read and add to your application. So how to prepare for the scholarship. Take the application's instructions seriously. Allow plenty of time to complete your application. So you have time to review and double check it. Stay within the maximum word counts for your essays and short answers. 500 words. Um, quick takes should be about a sentence each. The application itself will not let you submit if you have too many things um, or too many characters in the boxes. So um, understand that. Follow the directions. Don't include extra items. We don't want a resume. That's not what we're asking for. You don't need to put certificates in your application from every course that you took. That's okay. Um, this is just um, follow the directions. Um, if we only ask for one academic recommendation and one um, extracurricular or additional um, recommendations. We do not want multiple, um, more than two recommendations. So if you submit three, we're only gonna read the first two that were submitted. Um, so please follow directions on that. If you are having issues with your recommenders, I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, start your prep early. Oh, this is, I, I did not update this. I apologize. Remember the um, test date, the due date is April 10th, 2024. Make sure you start that before April 9th. You cannot get everything done in one day. 
Your recommenders should know you well enough to write a positive letter of recommendation that makes it clear that they know who you are and that um, and they need time to submit that. So tr that's why we recommend putting their in that um, their information in the second you start the application, because then they can get those recs in um, ASAP as well. The recs are due the same day as the application, so April 10th. If let's say you sent the um, form to your recommender, they received it, but they haven't turned it in and they keep not turning it in and you, or they tell you, you know what, I don't have the time to do one for you anymore. Um, can you ask someone else? Please reach out to us and then we will update your application with the new person and give them that link. Because um, if you go in and delete and resave, it will mess up your application. So if you need to change your recommenders, please um, email or call us and we will make that change for you. If you are homeschooled and you said, I don't have a traditional teacher in that setting, um, a humanities or STEM teacher, it can be something that falls within that field. So maybe you took a Shakespeare course that would fall under a humanities type of um, recommender or your academic recommendation. Um, Additional recommender really can be anyone else that you want to talk to you, um, talk about you. The biggest mistake that people have with recommendations is, is they ask people to write them letters who don't know them well, but they think we'll be, we will be impressed as the committee reading. If that does not help you, it may hurt you more. So make sure your recommender is from someone who really knows you both in the classroom and then outside of the classroom as well, and can really talk to the committee about what type of person you are. Things to remember, the student applying is the applicant. Yes, parents can be there to help, but the student is the applicant. When we are looking through the application and we see that everything is typed in the third person, that's telling us that the parent did their application, not the student, and the student is the one that is applying. Um, a parent can absolutely proof, proofread your work, make sure that you are attaching everything correctly, different things like that, absolutely. But the um, applicant is the person who is doing the application, should be the voice of the seventh grader. Be original. Many of our readers say that a great essay or um, opening line or slice of story captures their attention and makes the applicant memorable. The second biggest mistake that applicants write is or have is they write what they think we want to know, not who they really are. We want to know who the applicant is. What are their interests? What are their passions? Why do they love learning about a certain subject? Why do they love doing a certain extracurricular activity? That is, um, whatever is their passion is what we want to know. Please do not make your application full of something that you think we want to read. It should be about the person. Those are what makes the best applications. And like I said, share your um, passions. Um, as we ask about your outside um academic, uh, your extracurricular, extracurricular activities for a reason. We want to know what you're doing outside of the classroom. What makes you excited um, to in life every day? So it could be an extension of um, academia that you are your extracurriculars. That's totally fine. But we want to know about what you were doing in your extracurricular life. Um, so now we will get to the Q&A portion of the evening. Again, for the standardized test score, someone um, asked about iReady test, um, if the school administers it. Yep, iReady is a perfect um, example. Again, if your school administers the test, it's a standardized test. So you don't really need to worry about um, it not being a um, standardized test if the school um, administers it. Um, And yes, the recording will be on YouTube um, this um, by the end of the week, hopefully, um, if all goes according to plan. Does OneDrive work for the media file upload? Sometimes it does, sometimes it does not. Um, so the, the ones that generally always work are Google Drive and Dropbox, and that's why we recommend them. Um, so it, it, you can chance it, but oftentimes if we are reviewing an application and you do have a file that we can't access for some reason, we will reach out to you and say, hi, we can't access your um, essay part B. Could you please resend it to us in a different file format? Um, but it just is easier for us as we go along if we can open it right away. Um, but your, your application won't get thrown out if we can't open up a media file. We choose between 25 and 30 scholars a year. 
and we get between 350, um, 350 and 400 applicants every year. Um, Unfortunately, um, our scholarship is only available to students who are currently in seventh grade or are planning to start high school in the fall of 2025. Um, I'm not aware of any scholarships that are currently available for eighth grade students um, unless they are um, at individual schools and you will need to reach out to them. Um, the SBAC test, again, if you take if this test is taken at school, you're good to go. Um, do not worry about um, of that. A permanent resident of the U.S. cannot apply. You have to be a U.S. citizen. Um, that and, and there's no wiggle room on that. This is a great question. Can you tell us more about the types of applicants who are able, who are successful? These are the applicants who really show us who they are, not who they think we want them to be. They tell us about their passions. And it's not just um, kids who have a whole bunch of passions. Your passion could be math and your application is really math heavy. That's okay because that could be your passion. But if they tell us about why math is their passion, them not just I do math because I should do it, right? Why are you passionate about math? Why do you want to do math competitions outside of school? Um, who, so applicants who really tell us why they're passionate, why they love learning, why um, they want the scholarship. Those are who are the ones who are the most successful, not the ones who are trying to be someone that they are not. If your school administers um, a standardized test multiple times a year, the test re the test report will come out with all of them on there. Just send in the last two years um, on there. That's totally fine. We'll be able to read that. We see every standardized test under the sun, so we will be able to read any report that you upload to your application. And if, if for some reason we have some questions about it, we would reach out to you and ask. Um, we would never like toss out an application because we couldn't read a score report. So great question. If your child takes classes at a school, should we include that info? Um, yeah, there is an area on the application on the general form that um, for additional academic coursework, you can list up to three courses. If they are graded, um, yes, you can submit those grades. There's a section for you to upload, um, but they don't have to be graded. Many of our kids take courses who are graded. Um, and so they just tell us about it. But if they are, you can upload those grades. Um, if not, totally okay too, but only three courses we are looking for. So your humanities rac um, academic reference can be anyone who falls under that humanities umbrella. It is a teacher who knows you as an applicant the best. So like I said, the um, kids who have the referrals because they think this is going to be what looks best for us as this committee are the ones who generally don't. Look for your referrals who really know you and write a really good letter about you. The referral people should never um, ask you to write your letter. If they're asking you to write your letter, you should find somebody else. If you have a very specific question, you can email us at scholarship at educationaladvancement.org. That's generally the fastest way to get a hold of us or you can give us a phone call. Um, the email that is sent to you, yes, they will have a link um, you will, that they will fill out. You will not see if they filled out on your application. It does not link that way, unfortunately, and we cannot, um, it doesn't allow us to link it um, that way. So if your referrals have said, yep, I filled it out, you can contact us and we can let you know if we have it yet or not. Um, Again, while we're reviewing your application, and let's say we see that you don't have an academic recommendation, we will email you and say, hey, we never received your academic recommend recommendation. Um, do you think there was an issue? Can you get it to us by the end of, and we'll give you, you know, a couple days to do that. It is better if we get them all by April 10th. That is the due date, but we are not going to throw out your application because your extracurricular recommender didn't get the, the letter in, but they should be in by April 10th. And please ask them if they have um, turned it in. If they're not getting the email from us, also reach out to us so we can um, fix that situation um, and send it to them. There might be a firewall, but that's why they're not getting it. So if I send the link itself from my email, that generally works. So there's some workarounds, but ask your recommenders if they are getting the emails. If they've not, contact us. Um, ask them if they've submitted it. If they have, you can contact us and we can let you know.
So we understand that some students just don't perform well on school administered tests. That is one reason that our application asks for so many things. We are a whole child program. We want to see your, we know that you're not just a grade and a test score. So that's why we want to see your work sample. We do have students who are selected every year who don't perform as strongly as others in standardized testing. Um, and that's just, you know, some part of the, the process. So um, that could be something that you would talk about in your additional um, information and um, upload maybe why um, some uh, back up some information as to why maybe you don't perform as well on standardized testing that you don't have to, but that, that would be um, additional information example. Yes, like I said, the SAT, ACT, and SSAT is truly optional. It is, I'm not making this up. It does not hurt and it does not help them at all. It is just one piece of information that we can add to their application. Um, if they have a really good score on it and you want to submit it, go, great, that's fine. Um, but um, it does, it truly is optional. Uh, there's a rumor out there that every year when we say that, that we are lying, we are not. I promise you, um, as the program manager for the scholarship, it really, really, really is optional. Um, a philosophy teacher would fall in the humanities portion. Um, so that would work for an academic recommender. So remember your academic recommendation, you only have one and it could be from a humanities or STEM field. No, absolutely. If you have a student that goes to a gifted and talented school already, they are not at a disadvantage because they already have that opportunity. We have students who apply who are at a gifted and talented school or they're in gifted and talented programming within their middle school or their public school. Um, so it does not hurt. Um, we have students who are not um, identified as gifted who apply to the scholarship every year because maybe their school district doesn't um, do testing or whatever, um, whatever reason they aren't identified as gifted. So that it just it's just one more piece to the in, in information. So we are not looking for a score range or percentile for the SSAT or the SAT or the ACT um, or on your standardized testing for a reason, and that's why we don't post it. So just put, send in your scores um, to us um, as part of your application. So yeah, great question. Um, a little bit more about the benefits of the scholarship outside of the funding. You have a community of um, not only scholars and who are your peers within your grade level or within your high school years. You also have access to our alumni network, to our um, parent network, which is both are very, very strong, who often help students find um, research opportunities, internships, jobs, give them topic, um, are there to chat about things that are in, of interest to them outside of their schooling and maybe help them direct them and mentor them in different ways. Um, one big benefit that we have every year for our high school scholars is they come for the Bradley seminar for a weekend of learning and it's all of us together, um, all scholars um, and their parents. So the parents also form a network as well. Um, and then you have access to the IA staff, which um, will help you um, within schooling, another advocate um, who's not your parent um, that can help advocate you for your child um, within an educational setting. So maybe they're not um, allowing you to accelerate in math and you should be. We're there to be a, an advocate for your child to make sure that that gets happened and that that happens for you. Um, yeah, so it's okay if your school doesn't offer extracurricular activities. Um, so maybe you only have one spot, one extracurricular activity. We know that some schools are different um, and that's okay. And that's why um, we don't ask for a million um, extracurricular activities or maybe you only do them that ones are not school sponsored. So we are asked for, they can be school sponsored or non-school sponsored extracurricular extracurricular activities. So it could be sports. It could be something after school that is school sponsored whatever it is, um, our scholars really are the have the wide variety. We have kids who are involved in a lot of things, and then we have kids who are really only involved in one or two things, and that's what is really what makes our community really great. We have this diverse um, group of kids, um, bright, gifted kids. Yeah, if your school only administers the math portion of a standardized test or only administers the English portion of a test, that is totally fine. Submit what you have. So again, if your um, recommenders, if you don't, um, if you ask your recommenders, if they've submitted it and they say yes, you can contact us and we can make sure that it's there. 
Um, or um, if they've said no and you need to change it, just reach out to us. So standardized testing, we're looking for the two most recent years. So if you don't take them until May, we'll look for your, in your seventh grade year, submit your score from your sixth, your fifth and sixth grade year instead. Um, if your school submits, if your school offers two standardized testing, you can choose one to submit. Um, you don't need to submit both of them. So the more visual form for the reflective prompt, if it's a media file, um, three minutes. If it is um, a written response, um, 500 words. Um, I'm not really sure what would be bigger um, um, outside of those realms. Those are kind of the two things. If you have um, a specific question of what um, that would look like, if it's a lab report or something, uh, please reach out because that's a pretty specific question and we can um, help answer that. Students will be notified if they've made it to the finalist round in um, by the end of June. Nope, to, students do not, we don't ask for percentiles or um, different things like that. Um, so just submit um, what you have. We also know that some schools don't have traditional grades in middle school and instead have reflective transcripts. So we know that that is something that may come across our desk as we're reading that and that's okay. Uh, yes, the ISEE is a standardized test. If you took those outside of school, you can submit those as standardized testing as well. Um, so for your additional recommender, you can submit for your um, academic recommend recommender, your English teacher, and then your additional, your math teacher. We don't recommend that, though. We really, for the additional, are looking for someone who's not um, a STEM or math teacher. We're looking for... Um, someone outside of the academic setting for that additional recommender. But if those are, you think, the two best people to write for you, then you can. Yes, a report card is acceptable in lieu of a transcript. So submit what test scores you have. We understand that every school is going to be different. Uh, trust us, we work with applicants from all 50 states, and there's lots of different scenarios for what standardized tests look like. Submit what you have to um, for us, and that will be okay. Again, as we're going through, if we have questions about something, we will reach out to the um, applicant and their family for follow-up if there's um, we can't access a file or there's a question about reading the standardized testing scores or something like that. Yep, again, like I, I just said that, if something is not, um, if something is incorrectly submitted or sometimes um, applicants upload the file, um, the two files instead of one um, in mistakes, we will reach out. We're not gonna throw out the application because of a small error like that. Um, so we will reach out to you um, if that. Um, we are for our standardized testing are really looking for those school standardized test scores. Um, but if you only have something that is not administered by the school, that's totally fine. Submit, like I said, um, submit what you have for your standardized test scores. I know that that makes it a little more confusing because it's so big and I'm not just saying we only accept these five tests. Um, but trust what you have is going to be correct um, for that. Yes, yeah, so if you um, uh, academic courses taken outside of school, um, you can upload three. You can talk about three of them, and they can be CTY courses. They can be art of problem solving courses. We don't need the transcript or syllabus. You just will write a really brief explanation of what the course is. If you have a transcript with a grade report on there, you can upload that from them. Um, so do you consider applicants who have overcome learning challenges or who have learning differences from neurotypical students? Absolutely. And that would be a great, um, we have that every year. We have scholars who have had that happen to them. Um, so if they want to write about that, they can. Um, that's something that they want to share in their application. Absolutely. That would be a great spot in their additional information um, section to put in there. Uh, but yes, absolutely we do. So if selected, what does the program look like through eighth grade into high school? So um, many people ask, why do we select kids in seventh grade instead of eighth grade if this is the high school program? And that's because that eighth grade year is really, really important to us. We um, are in constant contact with our eighth graders of finding what that best fit program for them is going to be. 
So it may be um, an independent school. It may be an online school. It may be a hybrid program. What is going to be their best learning environment? We do not have limitations on where um, what schools kids can go to. Um, so we work with the families to find what that best fit program is. If there's a school or program that we are not familiar with, we are researching um, it and talking with them so we can help our um our families a little bit more. Once they're in high school, we are talking with our um, scholars at least monthly. They're turning in their grade reports. Making, we are making sure that they are doing well academically and socially and emotionally. Um, so we're talking to our scholars all the time. If selected to be a finalist, they will be an interview portion. Um, that is correct. Um, and that those are held in the summertime, primarily end of June, July, beginning of August. We um, generally come within about an hour and a half of an applicant. Um, we don't ask them to go farther than that um, in most cases. And it is a really relaxed conversation interview about, um, we know about them on paper. So we want to talk to them a little bit about things that are on their application. So for every applicant, it's a little bit different. Um, but if you are selected to, the, to be a finalist and go through that interview portion, we will um, talk more to them about that at the end of June if they get there. So some examples of work samples. We have students who turn in lab reports. We have students who turn in their history day projects. We have students who turn in um, pieces of novels or a report that they wrote, um, a math, math problems that they've solved. Um, it can be a piece of music that they composed. Um, you name it, we've had someone um, turn something like that in. So um, it really can be what a piece of work that they're really proud of. The, it gets a little tricky when it is a group project. So we try to say don't turn in something from a group project because that, that does get a little bit tricky of deciphering who did what. Doesn't mean you can't. It just gets a little more tricky. So if you have something from that you just did, that is a better. Um, so we don't have an age requirement. Like I said, they are either they're currently in seventh grade or plan to start their high school program in the fall of 2025. We understand that many gifted kids are accelerated, and so that's why we don't have an age range. Um, so they're either currently in seventh grade or and or plan to start high school in the fall of 2025. If you do choose to take the optional SAT, ACT, or SSAT, there is no preference. That's why we, um, it is just what is easiest for you and your family to take. Um, if you are someone who had test scores from outside of school and ones from inside of school, so let's say you took the ERB at school and you took the ISEE outside of school, we would want the e, the ERB, ERB scores would be preferred outside of the ISEE scores. Uh, so if you have both, we prefer the ones from in school. Yep, orchestra or band teacher would work for the um, additional um, or extracurricular referral. So anyone... The only one that we have real strict rules on is that academic setting. Yeah, so if your interest or strength is in mathematics, but you think that your humanities teacher really, really knows you well and can write a better recommendation, absolutely have them do that. Um, if you took an AP exam score, you could put that in with your transcripts um, to let us know that would be an additional course that you took, yes. So we announce, we email all applicants. That's why I talked about parents using an um, email address that they check regularly. Um, that way they know that we, um, that they um, let them know about um, any updates to their application or if we have any questions about their application. So everything is done via email um, about updates to their application. So, um, Great question. What do you mean by send to IEA? When you take, if you take the SSAT, I say send to IEA, there is an option for you to send scores and you will send them to the Institute for Educational Advancement and we will get um, a score report. It's We get them faster than you get them. So that's why we have you send them. Um, the interview round, I talked a little bit about it, but um, what if you are selected to be a finalist and go to that interview, we will talk more about that to the scholars. Um, if you took a Spanish course outside of school, that would be an academic course, not an extracurricular. 
If you have IQ or, IQ or aptitude scores, you can upload those as well. Um, not everyone's going to have them. Maybe your school have them. Maybe you did them yourself. If you want them to be included in your application, you can upload those as well. Between 25 and 30 scholars are selected each year. Um, no, so you will not upload a portfolio if you wanted to use, let's say, an art piece for your work sample. Um, you would up, you would choose one piece for you to submit for your work sample. If it is an art piece, um, oftentimes art can be abstract or we know. Um, so we do ask you to just do a little um, description of what the art piece is that you are uploading with us. Um, it doesn't need to be another essay by any means. Just a brief description. Um, of what um, the art piece is that you are submitting, like three to five sentences, very brief. Again, I'm not gonna talk about percentage, uh, percentile scores, uh, past winners, because they run the gamut. That's why we don't ask for certain um, percentile scores on the SAT, ACT, or SSAT. Language is not part of humanities. So um, like if you have a Spanish course, a Latin or Mandarin teacher, that would not be a humanities teacher. If their student has not yet found their passion, that's a great question. Then they have lots of different interests and we want to know about what their interests are. We understand these kids are 11 to 13 primarily who are applying for the scholarship. So they may not have found their passions, but they're trying lots of things to figure out what their passion is. We also have scholars who, when they apply in, um, as seventh graders, then their passion changes by the time they're in 10th grade. And that's the beauty of you know growing up and being in an educational environment where you can find different passions. That's totally um, okay. They've not found their passion yet. Um, but tell us what they are doing. Um, tell us what you are doing right now um, that you enjoy. Yep, we have kids across the United States. It is not based, we don't have, you know, we don't do only certain amount of kids from each state each year. And it is open to all 50 states. All recommenders can be or should be from the last two years. So that's what we're looking for, the last two years. And a non-academic non -academic recommender is anyone who is generally not in the academic setting. So a coach, a counselor, anything like that. There is no most important component of the application. Um, that is another rumor. Um, that is why we have so many components of the application. We really want to see everything about the whole child, then that's why it's this portfolio application. We want to see all components of a child, um, of the applicant itself. Um, if you have really specific questions about your student um, and if they're eligible to apply, please email um, me at scholarship mm -hmm. at educationaladvancement.org and I can help um, answer those questions a little bit easier. Um, again, our program, we do not have certain quotas for different schools where our kids can go. So it's whatever program is best fit for them. We don't do a semi-finalist announcement and a finalist announcement. We just let kids know if they reached the finalist round and if they did not reach the finalist round. And then we announce the winners at the end of the summer. Yes, absolutely. If a student um, attended, um, started their ninth grade year at one school and it no longer is their best fit, we can absolutely make a change. Usually, um, it is just um, we have one change. Sometimes there's more, but generally we get it right. Um, on the second chance by then. <clears throat> Again, if you're not sure what you want to submit for a work sample or for a specific question about the work sample, please email scholarship at educationaladvancement.org. Um, if you received a national award, maybe your fifth grade year or fourth grade year, you can submit that. Primarily, we're looking for stuff for the past two years, but if it was a really, really big award, you can submit that. Um, yes, if you are live in a state that only doesn't get print reports anymore and the school won't print them off for you, which sometimes they won't, you can do a screenshot of the online portal or your child's online portal, portal where the school, um, where their test scores are and upload that. An audio file would work instead of a video file, but again, three minutes. 
No, if someone won from your school last year, that is a great question. It, it will not affect your chances. We don't take that into consideration. It just so happens every year we have kids from um, certain schools who uh, get selected from every year. So that's totally fine um, if someone won from your school last year. Yes, yeah, so if you have a combination of homeschool and virtual school um, transcripts, upload what you have. Um, we That is very common for us to see. Um, so don't worry about that. We'll be able to decipher kind of what you did. Um, and we know that maybe some of them are graded, some are not. Just upload what you have. Um, or maybe you started the year, half the year in a school, and then you went to homeschooling, and you changed, and then you went back. We've seen it. Don't worry. We'll be able to figure it out. And if we can't, we will reach out to you. Um, if you took the SCAT from John Hopkins and you don't are at a school that doesn't offer standardized testing or you were homeschooling, yeah, you could submit that. That would be fine. Um, again, guys, your second recommender, like I said, it can be anyone um, that is not in your academic setting. We are primarily looking for something um, from your extracurricular world, but it can be another academic course. Yeah. If um, the ISAE I know is not administered by the school, but if that's just what you have, you can submit that. But if you have both ISEE scores and school um, standardized test scores, please submit the school standardized test scores. This is a merit-based scholarship. We do not look at any financials. We do not look at, at anything else outside of merit. It is purely merit-based. Grades are important in this process as it is a merit-based scholarship, but um, we understand that maybe some things happen. Sometimes you take a course that's really, um, really challenging for you and you get a B in it, or maybe something happened in your personal life and your grades kind of slipped. And that's where that additional information section is really important or for you to let us know why maybe there is something going on on your academic record that does not um, follow through the rest of your transcripts. So if the student goes to public school, can the funds be used for something else? That is a case-by-case -case basis. Sometimes we will allow them to be used for um, additional courses that the school doesn't offer, or um, that's a case-by-case -case basis once a scholar is selected and we talk about what that will look like. Um, we interview between 50 and 60 scholars, um, or it, we interview between 50 and 60 applicants every year and between 25 and 30 are selected as scholars. So when I, like I, I already went over that. Um, yeah, so an outside school leader, um, like um, for your additional recommender, be like a 4-H club leader. That would be a great leader uh, or great recommender um, to have. It could be your pastor, it could be your rabbi, it could be your Girl Scout or Boy Scout leader. That would fall under your additional recommender as well. Yes, if you have a work submission in a different language, it should be submitted with a translation so we can see what you are submitting. So like I said, if your child is homeschooled and not in a specific grade, um, that's why we say if they're planning to start their high school program in the fall of 2025 and complete their high school program in the spring of 2029, this is the year that they will apply. Your transcripts will look a little bit different, so you would upload those last two years of homeschool transcripts um, to us. Yes, a dance video can be used as your visual essay. That is um, fine. It can be a creative piece. Like I said, can you talk about the qualities you're looking for in a scholar? We are looking for kids who are leaders within their school, and that doesn't necessarily mean that they have every um, elected position on there, right? Leaders can be different um, different types of leaders. We're looking for kids who are passionate about um, learning, who are passionate about um, the world, who are creative thinkers, who want to make a change in the world and want to make the, um, a better place who are willing to take challenges. If you are a math kid, um, maybe you will take a poetry class, right? You're not just going to stick in the math route. You're going to challenge yourself to learn different ways um, and to learn different things as well. 
Yes, absolutely. On the application, it should be the parent email for everything because that is what we are looking for and that's what we're going to contact you with. Um, please use an email account that you will check regularly, but the child should be the one filling it out. And we also understand that we have working hours. So if you call us, um, most likely your child's going to be in school and they're not going to have the opportunity to call us. So the parent can call and ask a question. And we understand that that is going to happen um, with that. So that is okay. So don't be afraid as the parent, if you call us in the middle of the day to have a clarifying question about your about the application. But we just really want the um, applicant itself to take the lead in it. Updates, um, unless it is a major update to the application, we do not want additional updates um, after the deadline. But let's say you talk about you're in the middle of a competition and the competition ends a week after the application deadline, you can email us and let us know how the competition, competition went. Um, the additional re recommender does not have to be school related. It can be, like I said, a coach, a, a community leader. Let's say you're at a school that goes through high school and they're happy. Can you still apply? Absolutely. We have scholars every year who are at K-12 schools or 7-12 schools and they love it and they want to stay there and that is fine and it works for that. It is possible from, for more than one student from the same school to get the scholarship. That has happened before in the past. Um, no, the scholarship can be um, used for outside of private school courses, like tutoring, different things like that. If that is, then goes with a conversation, if you were selected as a scholar, how your funds will be used. And we'll talk, we would talk about that and have a, a conversation. Um, yes, if you, your recommender only speaks a certain language, can you submit it with a translation? You can, um, that is fine. The additional info section, this is a great question. Um, if it is a sensitive topic, I understand that coming from a parent, that might be something that you wanna bring up. That can be from the parent point of view, um, but you could also talk about that in the parent statement and leave the additional information section for the um, applicant to fill out. Kind of your choice. Um, since you only have 500 words in the parent statement, but that's also why we ask a parent for the parent statement. So we are um, a little bit over time. I apologize for that, but thank you all for attending. Um, if you have any other questions, I think I was able to answer most of them. Please email us at scholarship at educationaladvancement.org, or you can give us a call at 626-403-8900. And I hope you guys all have a great evening.